in this problem, we essentially have a pendulum um, that um, fish are attracted to. And um, you observe um, this phenomenon, so you can take a spherical. The problem, we have a new fish species discovered in the Fraser River and has been observed to be attracted to swinging pendulums as depicted in the figure. You want to observe this phenomenon, so you take a spherical metal ball of mass 0 0.585 kilograms attached to a rope of length 1.5 meters and tie it to a buoy as shown in the figure. Uh, if the drag force of the ball is modeled by um, the relationship to the velocity times negative 3, uh, what must be the radius of this ball um, for oscillations to um, occur? Um, we're assuming that g is 9.81 meters per second squared, and uh, we're using a small angle approximation for pendulum. So um, the angle of um, oscillation is small. And we're asked to determine when does this, for what values of the radius, does this oscillate? So we're going to start with uh, a sum of moments um, about um, A. So we're going to... I'm going to draw this in the diagram. So we have um, our pendulum that's stuck to the buoy up here, and we're going to call this uh, point A. And um, we're going to do we're going to start with uh, some moments about A because some of forces um, there's forces pointing down due to gravity, and then there's going to be a reaction force up, but that doesn't tell us anything about the system, right? They're going to be balanced. Whereas, because there's no acceleration in the vertical, in the y or x directions. But um, we can do a sum of moments, and that's going to be equal to I alpha. So let's draw a free body diagram of this to the side. So we have our pendulum with our uh, sphere over here of radius r. Um, and that's attached at the center like that. Um, so we're going to call this point A. Um, and we're going to draw in all uh, of the forces. So we have a force uh, downwards um, due to gravity. So we're going to call this Fg. And this is just going to be equal to the mass times uh, g. Right? Uh, and then we're going to have a drag force. Um, and it depends uh, which way you're moving. So in, in this diagram, um, I'm going to draw it in one direction, but it actually depends in, in which direction you're moving. So you can see that if this was moving this way, then the drag force would oppose and counteract. Instead, if this was swinging down this way, then the drag force would actually point in the opposite direction. Because um, of this relationship over here, there's a negative sign, which means um, that it counteracts the direction of the velocity. Um, which is 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 true for for drag forces. So um, you have to take this um, with a with a grain of salt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it in this direction. And so this is going to be F D, which is negative three times the velocity. And the velocity again is drawn in this diagram, but it's it's the velocity um, of this sphere. Uh, and um, Again, we're going to have reaction forces over here, R, Y, and R, X. And um, these will cancel out because we're going to take a sum of moments about this point. So let's do this sum of moments. Um, so the sum of moments about A is equal to I about A times alpha. And we start with IA. So IA is going to be i of this uh, sphere at the bottom here um, plus parallel axis to move it a distance l away right this distance over here so um, i about uh, the center over here i about o the center is going to be equal to two fifths times m r squared right where r is the radius and then we add parallel axis so plus m big L squared, right? So this is going to be our uh, I about A. Now we can actually take the sum of moments. Uh, so 
um, we're going to assume that this is our coordinate system. X, Y, and a positive rotation is uh, counterclockwise. Uh, so uh, we will um, take the sum of moments um, with the following convention. So we have that um, negative 3V times uh, the length minus mg times the length times sine theta is equal to i, which is 2 fifths mr squared plus ml squared times alpha. Right, so this is just i, I just plugged it in, times alpha, this term over here, is equal to the sum of moments, which is the component due to the force from um, the drag times the length, because that gives us this moment here, force, force, as distance perpendicular, these are perpendicular, gives us this term, and then this term is one due to gravity. And remember, we have a sine theta because uh, there's an angle, right? Uh, there's an angle here, so this is defined as theta, um, and then there's an angle um, this this points straight down, so there's an angle that relates these two quantities. This being theta, this being 90 minus theta. But we can make the small angle approximation. So we can say that sine theta is equal to theta. And um, we can also say that uh, the velocity v is equal to l times theta dot, which is also omega. And then alpha is equal to theta double dot, right? So we replace this into the equation, and we get that uh, negative 3 L squared theta dot minus mg L times theta, because sine theta becomes theta, is equal to 2 fifths mr squared plus ml squared times theta double dot, right? So we can condense this equation into uh, 2 over 5, 2 fifths mr squared plus ml squared all times theta double dot plus 3l squared theta dot plus mgl theta is equal to 0. So you can see that this is a differential equation in theta, and we can actually solve this differential equation. But we don't need to solve it because this question is not asking uh, theta, with, for theta with respect to time. It's only asking us to find what values of the radius make this system oscillate. So what do we need for the system to oscillate? Well, we need the characteristic part of the solution to be imaginary, right? Once that is imaginary, it actually oscillates and doesn't just decay and stop, right? Um, so what we need is um, we need to uh, ensure that um, we satisfy this condition, that the characteristic solution, so need characteristic solution, uh, to be imaginary um, so that we oscillate. And how do we do this? Um, well, we enforce the following condition. 3L squared minus 4 times 2 2 fifths mr squared plus ml squared uh, mgl has to be smaller or equal to zero, right? Because um, this comes um, directly from uh, the solution, the way we solve this um, differential equation. And uh, we want to make sure that the roots are imaginary, so the part in the square root is actually um, not 
is, is negative, right? So that we get a complex number. It's imaginary. Um, and um, so we want this part, which is the part in the square root, um, to be smaller or equal to 0. And this is going to set our radius. So we know all the other parameters. We know L. Uh, we know M. Uh, we know G. So we're just solving for that radius there. So um, isolating for R, we get that R squared has to be bigger or equal to 3L to the 4 uh, minus 4ML squared, uh, M squared, sorry, L squared, G. Um, sorry, this is L cubed. Uh, divided by, sorry, 8 fifths times m squared g big L. And if we plug in values and we take the square root, we get that uh, r must be bigger or equal to 0 0.05 meters. And this is the final answer.